Well, I'm going to give you my take on a Sopranos, that TV show, um, why I don't think it's accurate. Um, although, I never will actually watch the show on television. I've actually just watched a lot of clips on YouTube in the last couple months. And I was picking up things on it, and I says, you know, and it's not saying I'm, I, I'm going to tell you about organized crime, but I think one of the things you can probably get away with where it's accurate is talking about the state of New Jersey itself. I'm from New Jersey. Um, it's very corrupt. But where the corruption really lies is in the government and in the professional people far more than what they're displaying on TV with the Sopranos. Um, you know, here's New Jersey. The apex, the cancerous mole. <laughs> That's what I look at it. Well, actually, a lot of the Northeast, actually, to tell you the truth, everywhere in the United States is getting more and more corrupt. The more money they wrap, they pull in, the more laws they enact, the more different politicians promise things and, you know, people demand safety, the more crap we're going to have, basically. But New Jersey is probably the least free state in the country. Now, as far as the actors go, I thought the actors were excellent. Um, you know, I don't remember the guys, the actors' names, man. I'm not that familiar with the show. I mean, this guy, Pauly, he was the most convincing one. And actually, when I looked up his background, he actually did have a background where he was in with, you know, the organized crime a long time ago, and then he became an actor. Um... You know, Tony Soprano was, you know, there, there, were, there was a lot of good actors in it. But the thing is, first off, they made it look like people in the mafia, the Italian mafia, make these ridiculous amounts of money. Cash rolling in left and right. They don't make, you know, there may be a lot of cash exchanging hands, but that doesn't mean it goes in the hands of the people that are, that are in the organization. And... You know, it's like, uh, you know, you could be an accountant dealing with tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars. It doesn't mean you're getting hundreds of millions of dollars. You might be dealing with something that's worth, uh, you know, a set of assets over a billion dollars. That doesn't mean you're getting a billion dollars. You know, they displayed it like, you know, everybody, everybody's making all this crazy amount of money. But the other side of it is, too, I got annoyed at, they didn't show... The corruption in the police and the FBI enough. If you're in New Jersey, first off, you know, this is another thing that bugged me about this show. They always made it look like the cops are making very, very little money in New Jersey. And they had to work a side job a lot of times just to make ends meet. You know, one guy was saying he's installing my ceiling in my basement and he's a cop, you know, regular, but he had a side job doing that. Another guy's working in some garden place or something in some Lowe's or Home Depot or something you know to make ends meet cops in New Jersey make a lot of money even in the small towns some of the small towns in New Jersey the cops make more money than the New York City cops six figure salaries and I'll tell you this and you know hope Susan doesn't get pissed off you know on YouTube but this is honest truth there's known drug dealers in a lot of these towns Everybody knows this guy's dealing drugs for, and I know this stuff from many years ago, and, and I know it currently from family. Everybody knows that these people are dealing all these hard drugs, not marijuana even, like I'm talking hard stuff, right? Cops are oblivious to it because they're involved in it. Like, you know, I'll give an example, you know, some, you find drugs or something someplace in a, in a you know, laying in a park. And you call up the police, they'll tell you to go meet you in the back of a store somewhere, and they'll they'll pick it up. You know, so you know what they're going to do with it, right? I mean, there's a lot of examples like this, and they'll bust you over, you know, texting while driving. But some of the worst crimes going, they're scared to freaking deal with it. So I mean, I mean, there's good ones and bad ones, but they get paid a lot of money in New Jersey. Boy, they don't want you to have any kind of defensive, mech, you know, a knife or a gun. Or if somebody comes in your house, you better roll out the red carpet. Make sure he doesn't trip and hurt himself. Or else you're going to have a lawsuit against you because the crook hurt himself. That's New Jersey. And they're saying, you know, they're making a show about the Sopranos. 
The other thing I got burned up about on this show was the FBI. Now, you know, number one crook, now it's becoming very well known. You know, number one freaking biggest crook in the law enforcement, James Comey, right? But, you know, Eric Holder and ATF, there's, you know, J. Edgar Hoover, when he was around the FBI, was really, you know, the whole, the whole nine yards. I mean, it's, it's been crooked all the way along. But it's gotten worse and worse and worse. But now it's very, very common knowledge about James Comey. I don't know if, you know, Susan's going to like this in YouTube, but, you know, I'm putting this out in a realistic fashion. But, you know, they always showed the FBI squeaky clean. And, and, you know, everybody in the, you know, the mafia, whatever it was, you know, Sopranos, whatever, they were, oh, they were all this and that. And, and the FBI was, you know, cops were not, most of the time these people are like, Taking bets on the horse races and stuff, they ain't even making a, a. They're making a small fraction of what a cop makes, you know. And they make it sound like the cops are all broke and they don't have any money. Yeah, whatever. The FBI is crooked. The, the, the law, law enforcement is extremely. Cro- it's gotten worse. I don't think it was like this. Well, it probably always was like this somewhat, but. It's, it's gotten to the point where it's ridiculous. And the other thing is, they always show, you know, Sopranos, and this is not one of the houses, but this is just like a, a luxury house. Um, they don't have, you know, they don't live in this kind of money. Most of them don't. Now, what you're going to find has this kind of money is a doctor, you know, an, an attorney, a CPA, a politician, uh, somebody is a county, a county commissioner or something, city commissioner. Uh, you know, it could be a chief of police. You know, I saw one thing where this guy was a retired cop and he didn't have any money and they, they, they whacked him or something. I was thinking, this guy had loads of money, I guarantee you. They get, cops get paid big bucks in New Jersey. Um, and, you know, some people say it's because the job is extremely dangerous, but I'm telling you right now, they don't really go after the bad guys that much anywhere near it. You know, <laughs> besides, what is this guy, the new, the new governor that got elected? I forgot the guy's name already. He's going to make it a state for, a haven for, um, you know, people that can come into the country and feel like, you know, if you're here illegally. You're not, not talking like, you know how that's going to work, you know. Boris from Bulgaria is involved in, uh, you know, uh child sex trafficking and drugs and murder to come to New Jersey. He's going to have a safe haven. He's going to be feel safe to talk to the cops. You know, that's the logic they got today. Um, i got to throw that in here because, you know, that's that's more of the freaking bullshit that's going on in this state. They ain't against crime. You know? And, you know, it's an interesting story. It's like a catchy story, but it's all fabricated. It's almost like you know, I'm going to get it like this, too. Now, you ever see these things on TV where they show, like, you know, motorcycle riding? It's so like, oh, yeah, I'm just out there in the breeze and blah, blah. It's tough. It's not that romantic, like, you know, oh, it's so wonderful and blah, blah, blah. It's like, man, you got to watch your ass every time the weather changes, you know, you, you're out there in the elements. You know, it's just like that with... You know, when you're talking something like with these guys, in this, in an, if this is a real organization, not a TV show, it's not easy. I mean, they're not making a show look like it's easy, but they're probably, they're likely making it much, much easier and much, much, much more lucrative than it really is. But the reality of it is, most of the time you have these things with organized crime, it's because some yo-yo in New York City or New Jersey decided to pass extremely high tax rates on cigarettes and so you know somebody grabs cigarettes and i don't know trucks and brings them up there and resells them and you know stuff like that but it's like <coughs> you know it's not like you know you know what i mean they're bypassing the government so if they bypass the government through organized crime you know you know you make if you make um this actor's this actor died you know i know he died in real life uh, he had open heart surgery in 2017 he was playing on that show. Um, kind of, it's a shame, man, because you know, personally, all the stuff I know about health, I think this guy could have probably been alive for another 25 years, easy, and in great health. But um, you know, the stories are like 
you know, they're probably more accurate on the side where they're showing the organized crime part, but they're not accurate when they're showing, you know, the politicians, the law enforcement, and the FBI. They're not accurate there because pretty much everybody in the government is, well, that's why organized crime exists, really. I mean, really, if you take, you know, a big example of, you know, a famous example of uh, Al Capone, right? Why did he show up, you know, on the scene? Because prohibition. Well, what the hell right did the government have to freaking push? We all, and I said this many times. Prohibition was, you know, whereby John D. Rockefeller didn't like the competition coming from the farmers who were selling alcohol for fuel to the Model T Fords that are starting to get on the scene and replacing horse and buggies. He wanted all the business going to gasoline being produced by his standard oil company. So to knock out the alcohol sales, he pushed for prohibition. That was the whole thing. It wasn't, you know, he was the guy, he gave $4 million to the women to push for it for religious reasons, and it was a big scam, you know. So, and you know, the other thing is, too, and this is another side of it, you know, a lot of these guys, and actually in real life, too, You'll see, you know, an organized crime member to die of cancer, cancer to bladder, cancer to stomach, cancer to pancreas, and you know, cancer's curable, right? And you know, some doctor making five hundred thousand dollars a year, which is making way more than people in the so-called mob. Now, I'm showing Professor Tullio Sumancini, an oncologist from Italy. He's a hero. He's a real good guy. Okay, but you know. These other doctors, just the bad ones, most of them are bad ones. But they are worse than any organized crime. I've, oh, I've always thought that, man. I've always thought that. Now, Professor Tullio Sumincini, if he does intravenous baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, or um, direct bicarbonate to the cancer tumor, you knock it out. As a matter of fact, bicarbonate is actually a life force. It's an electron donor. You don't without the sodium, but just pure bicarbonate. You can't have enough of this. You know, he even he got clobbered by his professionals in Italy. He lost his license. You know, maybe he'll say he's organized crime and he's a bad guy because he's outside the realm of the racket. And that's really what organized crime is. Organized crime is moving goods and services outside government government eyes and prying you know hands <laughs> basically that's what the hell it is i mean i know they showed a part where you know they're shaking down people left and right you know where you know you gotta pay me for protection there's a lot less of that going on than other things where they're just trying to move goods without you know avoiding import export taxes and stuff now the other side of it is this you know you always hear about drugs and the mafia now i know I personally think, I don't take any drugs, you know. I know some people that are psychs, they'll tell you that vitamins are drugs. Then they'll say, they'll accuse me, because if I take a vitamin, that's a drug. I mean, there's people like that out there. That's ludicrous, but I'm just going to tell you, that's what the deal is. There, there are people out there that do that. I mean, you know, if you're going to accuse me of taking a drug because I take the best quality vitamins, like, well, maybe it's not the best, but it's one of the best, Nature's Way, Whole Food, Live Vitamins, but, you know, if you really want to be a drug dealer, make a lot of money, and have it all sanctioned by the state and get reimbursed by the state, be a psychiatrist. You could just have somebody come along and, you know how, like, everything is in life is an up and down? Don't ever tell a psychiatrist some down, I already know this, man. I mean, I never made that mistake. But I saw a read online where this guy, um... Oh, they got this in New Jersey, California, and Florida especially. Um, they can drug you up involuntarily and have it all reimbursed by the state. Actually, this new governor in, in New Jersey is pushing for more of this. There's big money involved in this. And once you get addicted to these psychotropic meds, well, there you go. And if you can't afford them, the state pays for them. Or, you know, they steal or confiscate all your freaking your wealth and stuff and they commit you and the state owns everything you've got and then they just, you know, screw you over forever. This guy, you know, this Sigmund Freud, he's like basically the father of modern psychology, psychiatry. 
And, you know, when you look at his background, he was nothing but a sexual predator that jacked up, like, young woman on cocaine and, you know, screwed him and stuff, right? That's what he was. But that's all legal, you know, in, in by, the, by the, you know, the powers. I mean, if the mafia was doing this, they'd be saying, Oh, the mafia, oh, oh, oh. You know, if you had Sigmund Freud talking with an Italian accent, and, you know, oh, I'm going to get these girls in here and give them cocaine, and this is how it's going to work. They're going to pay me money and, and give them treatment. and Yeah, you know what I mean. But they, they could do this if it's all government and they talk cute and nice. But this is another thing. That's, that is, this is actually the biggest drug racket in the whole United States of America, probably, right there. Besides, even when you're talking about illegal drugs, you know where they're coming from, the CIA. <laughs> Susan, love me. Susan of YouTube. I mean, you know, you know what I'm talking about, the lady that runs YouTube, the big CEO and all the money and stuff. I mean, it's like, I can't say this shit. I mean, I hope so, because uh, I'm getting kind of mad now. I'm getting discouraged. You know, maybe, uh, you know, we'll see. I don't really care too much, you know. It's like I'm not going to be that discouraged or anything because uh, I just wind up being more devious. Uh, but, you know, the deal is, you know, they, that's where I got pissed off when I was watching The Sopranos. I mean, they really embellish the organized crime life and everything that was a politician, everything that was in law enforcement, everything that was in... FBI, you know, everybody was all honest in those areas. All the professional fields, the doctors, you know, somebody being in the hospital, they were like, I mean, they didn't tell, you know, reality is, you know, they screw up in hospitals left and right. Besides, they hide all the best treatments because they don't make money on them. That's a racket. And I say, that's, you know, this guy, Paulie, it's kind of, he was always out there with his little thing with the suntan, you know, that was smart. Um, I mean, it was an actor, you know, but uh, I don't know what the hell. This guy, Tony Soprano, in real life, the actor died in Italy of a heart attack. I know that. Actually, a lot of these actors are dead, I think, today. Um, I'm not sure if this guy, Paulie. This guy, Paulie, was the most realistic one, I think. Um, I think they were all very good actors, and I think the show was put together well. But, um... I was pissed off at the fact that they really didn't show anything about... I mean, they made all the people in the hospital running in the hospitals looking really great. And they are not. They made everybody in law enforcement look great. Everybody in the FBI look great. And, you know, they really made... You know, to tell you the truth, if this was any other ethnic group other than Italians, boy, they would have been up in arms over this crap. You know that? They could slam the crap out of Italians doing this crap, no problem. And that's why, I'm going to tell you right now, you know, I've been hot on some of this stuff with the Confederacy down south and all that kind of crap as an underdog, you know. Um, and there's a reason there's a lot of Italians in New Jersey because, you know, you got to stick with your own group because, you know, if you go outside your group too much, I mean, it's people that just hate your guts because you're Italian. I mean, I know Italians ain't perfect, man. I know that. I mean, every group's got their freaking little idiosyncrasies, you know, that's screwed up about them. But, you know, if you... Just people... I mean, just people that just can't stand Italians, man. They hate them. That's why, you know, they they, they cluster up there in the Northeast. Um, but, you know, this show is really... It really does make Italians look bad. And, you know, even the mafia, the mafia doesn't make that kind of money, man. I mean, there's some people maybe, but, you know, the average mafia guy ain't going to make anywhere near what an average cop makes. You know that? But they ain't making it look like, hey, you got bags of cash here. And, uh. <laughs> Joke. You know? And, uh, so anyway, that's my take on this. I was kind of aggravated with it, you know, in a lot of ways. Um, and you know, uh, you know, now that I'm talking even about the FBI, you know, the FBI comes in, they're all freaking, you know, freaking squeaky clean, we're going for the bad guys, you know, the FBI is corrupt as all hell, 
I don't even, and I don't even want to go too far down that track because I could tell you a lot of stuff. But Susan will say, this video is now advertiser unfriendly. <laughs> anyway, Obama's corrupt. I mean, every, you know, you got district attorneys that are corrupt. Everything's corrupt in the government in New Jersey, practically. And they focus it in and make it look like, and you know, those are the ones more likely to live in a house like this versus the quote-unquote mafia. The mafia usually is just trying to scrape by. I mean, there's some guy on the top probably making a lot of money, but generally speaking, that is definitely not the situation. I mean, if you know, actually in New Jersey, everybody is wanting to go into the family therapy and psych profession. There's just a loads of money in it. That's uh, one of the no- that's one of the most popular. Prof- that is the like family therapy counseling. I don't know because it's all mandated by the state and stuff, and reimbursed by the state. Whether it's for kids or adults or anything, you know, kids got attention deficit disorder, PSTD, whatever. I don't know, whatever you know, post stress traumatic disorder, whatever, and you know. The drugs are that this is where the money is. I mean, you wouldn't be stupid not, and it's not that hard to get a degree in this garbage either. I mean, you know what it is? You've got to pay money to go to the college. Um, <laughs> I think I think in the future the mafia. Well, you know, maybe the mafia is going to be say, uh, smuggling in baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, and Professor Tulio Simoncini, an oncologist, is going to be. You know, the capo, right? <laughs> Saving all the people from the establishment um, chemotherapy, radiation, cancer doctors, right? Hey. And maybe the mafia is going to be smuggling in vitamins. Oh, they're going to be smuggling in uh, to New Jersey because when we go into the grand solar minimum, when it gets extra cold, and, you know, New Jersey is going to be like, you know, upstate New York or maybe southern Canada or Ontario. Uh, they're going to be smuggling in wood-burning stoves and firewood. That should be contraband. Watch. <laughs> anyway. You know, one thing I, I remember when I was up, you know, because I'm like, I'm like half Italian. I'm actually, I guess, a little more than half Italian if you really dig into the numbers the right way. It would be two-thirds. But, you know, I got, like, uh, Irish, East European, and Scandinavian. And um, so I got, you know, I don't look Italian at all. I remember they, I remember they were telling me uh, <laughs> I had a good cover. I was like, yeah. Uh, besides, I don't have an Italian last name. You know, blue eyes, light brown hair, blondish in the summer almost. You know, you would never know I was Italian. You know, I talk like I'm from New Jersey, but you never know I was Italian in a million years, man. Or I'm like mostly Italian, you know. You see, the way I calculate it is I get my DNA is just about 50% Italian. and But if you look at 100% native, what is the typical 100% native, they range between 66 and 74% Italian, 70% being the middle. So when you extrapolate, what my DNA percentage is almost half. That's really like two thirds. Because 100% native is not 100% Italian DNA. And the ones that have maybe 30% North European with 70% Italian, they look real light. If they got maybe Moroccan or, you know, North, you know, I know it's like, um, it could be like right across the Mediterranean, Algeria or Libya, you know, they might have a little bit of, uh, you know, like, uh, Moorish blood or something, and you know they're darker. You know they're darker. That's what you, the people call the ethnic Italian, right? Um, you know, so, but I don't look nothing like it. So these to say it was a freaking good cover. <laughs> so, anyway, it's good not having a last. I'll tell you what, man. If you have a last name that's Italian in your New Jersey, it's a plus. If you're outside the state, it's not a plus. It's not a it depends on where you are. Unless it's in an area where there's a lot of Italians. But if you're you know it works good for me because, you know 
Well, I, I got yeah. Southern heritage, though. I mean, I got Italian and I got Confederate. Confederate going all the way back to the American Revolution. I mean, that's not Italian. That's my father's side, my grandfather's side. My mother's Italian. But, uh, and my, f- <laughs> my grandmother must have had some Italian in her somewhere. She was from Europe. She must have had some Italian because I had a little more DNA, Italian DNA, than I should just from my mother. But, uh, you know, um, I got Italian and Confederate. That's what I got. Kind of a weird mix. <laughs> Confederate American Revolution, South Carolina. That's what I got, man. Yeah, I'm from the south, south, south of, not Italy, south of South Carolina. Anyway, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, they never, they never, they never made the authorities really look the way they should have looked. The authorities are really bad, man. They're very corrupt. They're very corrupt in New York State. They're very corrupt in New York City. They're very corrupt in Massachusetts, Long Island, um, Connecticut, Rhode Island. You know, everywhere for crying out loud. California, uh, Florida. Corrupt is all held down here. I mean, they're corrupt everywhere for crying out loud. You know, and they always say, ooh, the mafia. The mafia, the mafia, the mafia. Yeah, whatever. Anyway. But, you know, it makes for movies, right? But, you know, the other thing is, it's keying in to people. It's doing subjective brainwashing to people. That you can trust law enforcement. They're always going after the bad guys. That is not the way it is. I mean, I hate to tell you that, but that's, you know, if that's an eye-opener to you, it's not the way it is. Oh, the image is very, very important, though. The image is extremely important. Just like politicians. Image is everything. And, you know, unfortunately with the Sopranos, man, they really put a smear against Italians, and um, they put a whitewash job over law enforcement and the FBI, and doctors, and politicians, and the whole nine yards. I kind of got annoyed at that show in a lot of ways. It had some funny lines in there, though, I could tell you that. It was kind of funny, some of the lines in there I thought were pretty, pretty hilarious. Uh, pretty enjoyable, but, you know, I don't know. Freaking Hollywood, man. What else is new, right? It's never that accurate. That's all you got to say about it. There you go.